John, it's the, the Challenge Cup uh, this week and Underbank Rangers, they're the visitors to the Tetley Stadium. Yeah, and uh, they're a good team. You know, we've had a, we've had a good look at them. Uh, we, we've really had a, an in-depth look at their uh, game against West Wales because obviously they're out of season at the minute. Uh, and they played very well indeed. Uh, comprehensive uh, victors over a professional team. And they were well coached. Uh, so obviously they're going to present certain challenges that we've got to be up to in order to uh, come away you know, with a victory and obviously a place in the next round. What do you know about Underback Rangers? I mean, they are a, a National Conference League side. They have a number of players that have come through various Super League club academies, so there is a, a high pedigree there. Yeah, there is. There's a lot of us played for Huddersfield uh, Giants Academy. Obviously, there's uh, Nathan Chapel as well uh, in the second rows, uh, featured prominently for several uh, uh, professional clubs, as the hooker has done. And the, the full-backs played for the England Community Lions under 23. So we've done a fair bit of homework on them because you've got to be respectful of the opposition. And that's what we have been. So we, we've done all our prep. Obviously, that information will be relayed to, uh, to our, our, our team. And hopefully they can take that on board and uh, close down the threats and hopefully exploit what we perceive as, uh, as a couple of weaknesses. It's a real David v Goliath cup tie. How do you approach such a fixture, John? Well, it's the opposite of Leeds Bradford last year, isn't it? You know, they're, uh, they're in Bradford's role last year and we're in Leeds' role, so what we've got to be is be very respectful of the opposition. And that's, that's reflected in the side that we're putting out. Uh, we're respecting underband, but also we're respecting the Challenge Cup competition. I'm not one of these who thinks you should just put your reserves out and this, that and the other. We've, we've got to put a very, very strong team out who we hope will come away with the, with the victory. So respect the opposition, respect the competition, prepare as thoroughly as possible and be very disciplined and professional in our approach. Is it fair to say then, John, that we're not going to expect wholesale changes then this weekend? No, no, there's two changes to the 21-man squad. Uh, George Flanagan comes in and Matty Race comes in at the expense of uh, Anthony England and, uh, and Cam Berry. So uh, it's, it's very much the same as and the team will be very much the same as as well, although there'll be the odd tweak. Anthony England, is that just a, a, a chance to rest him? It is, yes. yes. I mean, when you've done 22 carries and 30 plus tackles uh, in the game against Featherston and you've played 50 odd minutes, you've put a fair old shift in, in that middle channel in very draining conditions against a very physical side. So uh, it won't hurt for Anthony to put his, his feet up, uh, get the cigar and brandy out and just watch the game and then obviously make sure that he's, uh, he's ready for the, uh, for the Oldham game. Matthew Race, is he rewarded after yes. some strong performances in the reserves? Uh, well, anybody who's watched the reserves will know he's, he's been one of the, the star men of the reserves. He's played really well. Uh, lovely left foot kicking game, some real good pivotal plays and he's defended very bravely as well. So, yeah, he, he's, he, he's certainly deserved that call up to the 21-man uh, squad and hopefully he'll benefit from that experience. George Flanagan, his first appearance of the new season, he's, he's served the time during the ban, I think it's going to be his 200th career appearance, so if he plays a special occasion for you. It is a special occasion, yeah, yeah. How does it tend to get 200? About 50 seasons, because he's, uh, he's had a few suspensions, hasn't he, during that time. But uh, yeah, it's, it's great. If, if he gets out there and it's his 200th appearance, I think that's a, a milestone that he can be rightly proud of. And hopefully, should that be the case, I hope he contributes with a real good, uh, solid performance. And after everything what happened last season in that Toronto game with Hakim Maloudi, the club have really stood by George. Yeah, he, he deserves standing by, to tell you the truth. I mean, George, George is... You, when you get a team or a, a group of individuals together, you've got to get an, a mix and match and hopefully come out with a good group dynamic. Well, George is very important to this group. The other players love him. Uh, the other players respond to his uh, cajoling, shall we say, and uh, he sets a real uh, sort of marker with his, his enthusiasm and his desire to win. So, yes, sometimes you want him to be a little more disciplined, but you don't want to take that edge off his game either uh, because uh, he adds something to us as a team and as a group. Does a tie like Bradford v Underbank, John, rekindle a bit of the, the magic of the the Challenge Cup. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I think you know all, all these ties where the there's the amateur teams playing the uh, the League One or Championship teams do, uh, but there's some pretty good 
<laughs> all championship clashes as well, aren't they? You know, I, I'm really looking forward to the uh, the London York game. I think that'll be a cracking game. But uh, what we're concentrating on is obviously progressing to the next line round, and, and and we know we'll be challenged. So we've got to be at our best in order to overcome uh, underbank. And I'm guessing no concerns over complacency. We all know what happened between Workington and West Bowling at the weekend. A bit of a cup scare there, potentially. It was a cup scare, yeah. I mean, I mean that's that's a great one, Mick. And, you know, it's, it's one that we'll certainly use as well to, to make sure that they're on the toes and they're ready to play. Because uh, if you're going undercooked and the other team are buzzing and, and, and they're really ready to play, which I'm pretty certain underbank will be because... Uh, I've seen their coaches' comments that this is their Challenge Cup final. Well, if you're in, if you're in what you perceive as a Challenge Cup final, you come prepared to work your socks off and, and really give all. Well, we've got to be able to, count, to encounter that as well. Their head coach, Richard Knight, says that in their 135-year history, John, they'll ne they've never really had a financial reward in the game like they're going to get on Sunday. It'd be good to see the Tetley Stadium packed and both Bradford and, and Underbank benefiting from a It is, crowd. yeah. I hope there's loads of, of fans come from Underbank. I hope there's loads of fans, that obviously, as well, following us as, as, as the Bradford Bulls. But, yeah, it's great. I mean, they, it cost them a, a bob or two, didn't it, to go down to West Wales because they were really professional. They stayed overnight, and I think you could see that in, in how they played. You know, they were, they were fresh, they were energised, and, and they were really ready to rock and roll. So... You know, they were very professional at that, but it cost them money because they're an amateur team, so they had to dip into their own pockets in order to do that. And it'll be lovely for them to be rewarded. And hopefully, you know, we can get three, four thousand folk there, which would make the, the Ram Stadium sort of really, uh, the Tetley Stadium really buzz. And hopefully, they can enjoy it, but not too much. And hopefully, we, we come out as winners and go into the bag for the next round. And these games don't come around very often, so a chance for everybody to, to enjoy the occasion. Yeah, well, we'll enjoy it if we win. Uh, so, yes, but uh, I'm sure the fans will, will get there. I mean, our fans have been magnificent. You know, they've been through some tough times. I think they can see an element of stability. They can certainly see the evidence of the first two league games in the Championship that they've got a group of lads who are willing to work their socks off for, for the shirt and for the badge. So I, I, I think they can anticipate a pretty good season and obviously a nice little cup run would be part of that. But we've got to overcome this obstacle first of all. And just finally, John, two narrow defeats against two of the teams that are going to be up there at the right end of the table challenging come the end of the season. Does that reinforce the self-belief that you know there's going to be a, a fairly successful season here? Well, we've always felt that we're going to have a successful season. But you know, when you look at league tables and so on, yes, we've played two tough games. York's first five or six games are horrific. So, you know, I, I think there's always a sort of a, a, a different slant in the early part of the season because some teams have played what you perceive as lesser teams than others. So I, I don't think you can really pay much attention to the league table until you've played everybody. When everybody's played everybody else, I think then you can get a real good gauge about what's going to happen. But yes, we've played two good teams. Yes, we've played well. And yes, we feel confident we can have a good season. Would you like a, another cup run? Yeah, we'd love another cup run, yeah. And we won't mind one in the 1895 Cup as well because uh, I think now it's being played as a, as a curtain raiser to the uh, Challenge Cup final. It'd be great to get there.